Welcome to the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, episode number 149. With great power, there must also come great responsibility. Stan Lee. Broadcasting from the back alley in Hollywood, it's the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, where we show you how to survive and thrive as an indie filmmaker in the jungles of the film biz. And here's your host, Alex Ferrari. Welcome, my indie film hustlers, to another episode of the Indie Film Hustle Podcast. I am your humble host, Alex Ferrari. Today's show is sponsored by Hollywood Camera Work. If you guys are interested in learning how to direct actors and become an actor's director, Hollywood Camera Work has developed an amazing master course called Directing Actors. And it is almost 30 hours, and I've taken this course, and it is by far the most comprehensive directing actors course I have ever seen. So if you want to get access to this course, head over to hollywoodcamerawork.com and use the coupon code HUSTLE to get 30% off. That's hollywoodcamerawork.com and use the coupon code HUSTLE. So guys, I know last week I was only able to put out one podcast, which was the a Throwback Friday podcast, and I'd do an original podcast last week. Last time that happened, I was sick as a dog, but I'm not sick this time. I'm just slammed. I'm, I've am i been blessed with uh, a good amount of work, um, finishing up the show uh, that I'm doing all the posts on for Hulu, the show Dimension 404. I put the trailer up on Facebook, and people went nuts. Everyone really liked it. I'm super proud and super excited to be on it, and I'm hoping to get the Rocket Jump Boys on the show soon and talk about how they built up an 8 million plus following on YouTube and how they've built their empire, uh, online empire up. So there's going to be more on that later. And I'm prepping for a new shoot. Uh, A bunch of you guys must have seen the picture of me on a crazy alien set, spaceship set. Uh, I'm going to be shooting a new series next week. So definitely check out my social media feeds because I'm going to be doing a lot of images from the set. And I'll give you more information about that series coming up in a few weeks. So it has been kind of crazy. I'm actually, it is actually Saturday morning at 4:30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time when I'm recording this. This is how much I love you guys. I want to get you guys some fresh content. Next week I will not be able to do this. So I wanted to kind of just get this podcast out to you. And it's an amazing podcast, too, by the way. Today's guest is Greg Grunberg. Now, if you've ever seen an actor who keeps popping up in all your favorite TV shows and movies, it's probably Greg because, I mean, I've been a fan of Greg's for a long, long, long time. And before I even knew who Greg was, I was a fan of Greg. I always loved the characters as he played. And he keeps popping up in all these these shows and movies that I've loved over the years. Shows like, you know, little shows like Alias, um, Lost, uh, Felicity, Heroes, and a super fun movie, uh, Big Ass Spider, produced by a friend of the show, Shaked. And he's also done a few little movies, uh, Mission Impossible 3, um, Star Trek, the new Star Trek, all three of them, uh, Lady Killers with the Coen brothers, J.J. Abrams, Super 8, and also that other little movie I forgot he was in, um, Star Wars Force Awakens. So if you guys know, I am a huge Star Wars fan, and I was so excited just to geek out with him about what it was like to be on that set alone is worth listening to this uh, podcast if you're a Star Wars fan. But Greg is also a director, a producer, a writer. Um, he does a lot of charity work. And, you know, he's he's one of those guys I wanted to get on the show because he is so down to earth and so open with his knowledge and information and experience he wanted to share with the tribe. Uh, I was just so excited to have him on the show, man. So prepare to geek out just a little bit and enjoy my conversation with Greg Grunberg. I would love to welcome to the show Greg Grunberg, man. Thank you so much for taking out the time uh, and uh, talking to the the tribe, man. I appreciate it. Oh, are you kidding me? Come on. We're all in this together. Let's let's, uh, (laughs) let's talk about it. Absolutely, man. Listen, man, I've been a fan of yours since the 90s, I have to say. Uh, You know, and my first my first introduction to you was Felicity. Oh, yeah. Uh, It was... It was it was a fun time in the nineties. <laughs> yeah, that was my first, you know, real break uh, into having a steady gig. You know, something that I knew. Okay, I was I'm working next week, and then the week after, and the week after. You know, it's it's a tough thing, man. You, you look at it and go, it's exciting to do a film. It's exciting to do an independent film or this and that. But when you get the opportunity to actually 
be doing something that you love on a weekly basis and know that there's work next week. It's just tough in our business. Oh, and uh, yeah. that was my first, my first one. And it was all thanks to my buddy, JJ Abrams, you know, that, uh, JJ and Matt had sold that show, uh-huh. uh, because if you're JJ Abrams, what other, what other type of of a show are you going to do about a, except about a girl who's going off to college? I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, it was just like, what? But, um, you know, they are, they're brilliant storytellers and, and they start with character first. And when you look at that series, I mean, you can watch it now, I think on Netflix and yeah, it's awesome. It, yeah. It just holds up. I mean, it's so beautifully done and, and well-written and I mean, when I'm I was very, very proud of those years and, and the relationships I when, built there. When I was watching that, I was like, I want to go to college. I want to do, I want to, I mean, I went to college, but I went to film school. It's a completely different environment, but yeah. like, I want to, like, I want to go to like dorms. I never did dorms. I had no idea what that was like, but just that whole experience. And it was just, it was such a, you know, we're, we're dating ourselves, but still it was a fun, <laughs> it was a no, fun time. I, but, but that's what I mean by, you know, it really holds up. I still have people coming up to me today and they say, oh, you know, it's like watching Felicity. I watched Felicity reruns or when I watched it back in the day. It was like watching my daughter go to college yes, or, yes. you know, I was going to college and it was so, because it was very real, you know, yep. it didn't lean on all the, the, you know, the trapping or the, the, you know, the, the trite sort of stories that you would see mm-hmm. that are fine, but it was all about the characters and the relationships and, and, and that stuff is evergreen. No, absolutely. And, and, and not only Felicity, but then you kept popping up on every, like one of my, every favorite TV show. <laughs> growing up <laughs> yeah i got lucky i mean felicity from right from felicity we're, we're shooting the last season of felicity i just finished the hollow man which is a, yeah. a movie that i did with paul verhoeven kevin, and kevin and, bacon and, yeah yeah and then uh they were jj was doing alias and he said look this is the last year of felicity but the first year of alias i want you to do both which is literally next to impossible as an actor because yeah. once you're on one network they won't let you cross over onto you know another uh unless they own it or whatever or they give permission and JJ just went to bat and said, look, I, I really want him on this. And he's not the, you know, the number one on the call sheet. So let's make that happen. And sure enough, I was playing, uh, you know, Sean Blumberg and <laughs> Eric Weiss at the same time. <laughs> Crazy. No, how, like, seriously, uh, like, well, first of all, you are the definition of a working actor. So you're uh, very blessed because, I, I mean, I see you all the time and I see you working all the time. And like, I told my wife, I was going to have you on the show. She's like, I love him. He's everywhere <laughs> in a good way. He's like everywhere. I see him all the time. Yeah. I, I'm, I've been really, really fortunate. Number one. And you know that I'm working with people that want to work with me again and again. I mean, as an actor, that's what you're, uh, you know, I, I'm also a filmmaker. I'm also a right. writer producer, but, but at, as a, as an actor, you're just, you're, you're at the whim of, of people wanting to work with you. And, I'm one of those guys, I think, that I'm versatile enough that I can play the cop, I can play the, mm-hmm. the best friend, I can play the, you know, the, the sleazy attorney, I can play the bumbling boyfriend, I can play, you know, or the husband or father. So I love doing all that stuff, and I don't say no. I mean, I really <laughs> – Obviously. Very rare. <laughs> Ob- obviously, sir. Yes. <laughs> you I mean, work. There, there are some skeletons in my closet. Trust me. You look at my IMDb, and you're like – what? Like I, w- I don't even I, want to name them. I don't. I'm not bringing them up in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> but for the majority of you know, I've been really lucky. I've been on, you know, Alias, Felicity, Alias, um, and Heroes. Especially Jeez, yeah. those. I mean, who gets to do over a hundred episodes of each show? It's just crazy. It's it's insane. It really, really is insane. And before we ca- before we continue, I wanted to give a shout out to Shaked uh, Burnson who connected us. Uh, yes. He was a f- former guest, a friend of the show, and oh. and of course he worked with you on uh, Big Ass Spider, which is obviously yes. Oscar bait, obviously. Yeah, but but <laughs> you know, just like and Shaked's the same way. I don't let people go. Like they become <laughs> part of um, my you know the the business world and part of my you know friend circle and sure. and we worked on Big Ass Spider together, which was an incredible experience. The, everybody at Epic, uh-huh. they're just great, uh-huh. Patrick and you know and Shaked. Shaked, though, is such a hustler, like we talked about, in the yeah. best sort of way. He's got great taste. Mm-hmm. He is just really good at putting projects together. He and Patrick like, really have mm-hmm. um, a good business acumen. And then also, you know, there's a good balance between finding stuff that the audience will like, but also stuff that you're not pandering and doing something that has already been seen. They really kind of look out for cool stuff. Mm-hmm. But I, we did Big Ass Spider together. I had such a great experience with Mike Mendez and especially Lombardo Bayard. I mean, that guy is a brilliant, brilliant actor. I brought him in. Mm-hmm. I got to be a producer on that movie. And then they came to me and said, hey, I'm doing this kid's movie, Tiger's Tale. Will you be a part of that? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so I did that. 
which was great because then kids, you know, it's, I love doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then we did uh, Tales of Halloween, which is, you know, that was a sort of a, a kind of a an homage to I played the same sort of character that I did. <laughs> Claire Kramer and I got to do that together. Um, and now Claire and I have this documentary we're working on. So it's like I, I don't let people go. You know, <laughs> once you but she can't is she can't is one of those that I will that I'm happy. She can and Patrick both. I'm happy to have in my life and also love it when when I when I look it down at my cell phone and it says she can where it says Patrick, I'm like, yes, please. You know, I can't wait to answer the phone because it'll be something real. You know, and, and the funny thing is that it, it, it's so true. Like when you find people you really want to work with in this business, you hold on tight. Yeah. Because it's they're rare. They're rare to find good people, you know, that you really enjoy working with and actually get things done is another yeah. big plus. So those guys and are it's, definitely it's that. It's also a mutual uh, sort of situation. Like I call them with ideas and they take it seriously. You know, it's not just, hey, we're calling you because we want you to be in this. We want to use your name to promote a film or whatever. I mean, they really are creative guys, you know, Mm -hmm. and they, um, and, 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 you know, also when you go through like frustrating moments creatively, because that's the creative process is tough, man. Yes, it is. And you're not always going to see eye to eye. You're never going to see eye to eye on everything. And to be able to come out the other side of these, these little petty things or big creative things and be friends and want to work together again, that's what it's all about. And, uh, you know, a good creative process has those ups and downs. It can't, if it, if it doesn't, then it's going to be mediocre and milk toast and red on the fence. And ugh, it's, it's never something that's going to mean something. Um, <laughs> big ass spider was that, I mean, it was at the beginning, they were like, okay, it's called mega spider. And, right. uh, and Mike Mendez was like, no, let's do something different. Whatever met with me. I said, I don't want to take this seriously. Everybody knows what mega spider is going to be. Right. It's going to be about a giant spider. It's going to be a sci-fi movie like Sharknado or whatever. Yeah. It's going to be, you know, I want it to be more. And actually, I hadn't even heard of Sharknado. That was, they were making that at the same time we made ours. Right. But it was like, let's do something. And then we improv the whole thing. I brought in Lombardo Boyard, who's mm-hmm. one of the best actors I've ever worked with. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's so versatile. Right. He, uh, he plays Jose in the movie. If you haven't seen the movie, you must see this movie because it's an example of. <laughs> You know, we, at the end of the movie, you go, was there a spider in that movie? Like, it's so entertaining. <laughs> you know, it's just it, Mike Mendez did such a brilliant job writing, directing. I mean, you know, uh, producing, d- directing. And and it was such a collaborative process between Chiquette and Patrick and Mike and especially Lombardo and I. You know, we really had a great time. And Claire Kramer was great. Anyway, I, I can go on and on and on. about. But, the, but did you guys do a lot of improv in that movie? Oh, my God. Like every scene. <laughs> Really? You just admit, so it's, it's kind of like a big, like structured Mark Duplass movie, but with a big ass spider. Yeah, actually, <laughs> that's exactly what it was. And the writer was great too. I mean, you know, it was laid out. You have to hit certain beats for story. Yeah. But how are we going to get from here to here? And Bardo and I, while they were setting up and we had no time, we had no, we didn't have the luxury of six takes. Right. It was, so we really, we, we you know, since Bardo and I spent a lot of time together and then when Claire, Claire, we did our scenes together too, but we rehearsed. Right before, and we're like, nah. What about this? What about this? What about this? And Mike and and Shaked and Patrick, they were they were happy with it. They're like, yeah, let's. That sounds great. <laughs> and not not everything worked, but most of it worked. And and it was just a really great experience. Oh my god, that's well, yeah, that's that's how I just did my first feature too, but without a big ass spider in it. But I'm I'm so surprised to hear that a movie like Big Ass Spider was a lot of improv, which is awesome. Yeah. It's a really yeah. good thing. Uh, yeah, and and, and uh, you know, um, Bardo and I, Lombardo Boyard and I have a have a shorthand together. Mm-hmm. Um, he yep. was in a movie. I wrote a movie, uh, co-wrote and starred in and produced a movie called Group Sex, mm-hmm. which is all about it. It's a sexaholic recovery comedy. Fantastic. Uh, you had me at, you had me at sex recovery. <laughs> exactly. By the way, if you have kids, don't ask them to Google group sex. Other things come up. You should not be. Exactly. <laughs> group sex film? But, no, not even that. that, that you'll still get yeah, other not stuff. Even that. No, 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 but, but group sex, Tom Arnold's in it, Henry Winkler, me, Josh Cook, uh, Odette Usman or Odette Annabelle. I mean, there's some great people in it. Really funny. Really, really funny. Um, Larry Trilling directed it. Lawrence Trilling, who is so brilliant. He ran Parenthood and, and Goliath. And now mm-hmm. he's doing he's, he's just a brilliant filmmaker. And he's a good friend of mine. We co-wrote this together. He directed it. I produced it and started it. And it just was such a great experience. And that's, the, again, you have to be malleable. You have to be, you know, able to. And and and, and uh, Lombardo Boyard is in that movie. And he steals every scene he's in. And as an actor, you know, without an ego, which is, I mean, I have just enough of an ego to keep me going as an actor, but I want to be in a scene with somebody that I am entertained with that blows me away, you know? 
Right. Um, and that's what he does for me. So every opportunity I get, I want to be on screen acting with Bardo. You know, <laughs> so, you know. that's all. Now, now, what made you want to become an actor? Oh, um, you know, just throughout my life, I mean, you know, growing up as a kid, I was in theater and I always did the plays and, and, um, I love being creative. I love getting response out of people. I just loved it. And, um, I never did it at the, at the expense of other people. I never did any, I, I hate bully humor. I hate you know, where, where, um, you're making fun of somebody just because of something they can't help. Mm -hmm. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I don't mind self-deprecating humor. I don't mind being that guy that people are laughing at or mm -hmm. reacting to. And, and I realized, wow, I could really, I, I'm good at this. I, I, I have an ear for what I'm doing, which, which, what I mean by that is a lot of actors, um, and I had this young, very young, it, they don't, they just don't hear themselves speaking mm -hmm. like, it's not natural. It doesn't flow. It, I don't, you don't buy it. And you're like, dude, do you even hear yourself? Like, that's not the way normal people talk that people don't finish sentences. People just because a sentence is finished on a script doesn't mean you have to, you know what I mean? The way I'm talking mm -hmm. right now, I'm finding words. I'm just, make it your own. That's right. What does. And if a director tells you they, that you shouldn't make it your own walk away. I mean, my God, right. <laughs> what the hell are we if we're not, <laughs> humanizing the words and, and, and taking it to the next level. That's what an actor's job is. Mm -hmm. And if you do it to a point where it, it dis disrupts the original vision, then of course, but if not, you know, you got to hear yourself. And I, and I, I, I think I had that at a young age and, and a, in elementary school and junior high and, and, and then growing up with people like Matt Reeves and JJ Abrams and, um, you know, there's a buddy of mine, Jason Brooks, who's just amazing. And, and, uh, these guys, um, I, I just started acting over the years, started doing commercials, started guest starring on things. And then, and then my friends were in positions where they could hire me in bigger ways. And, uh, I was ready at that time. I mean, I, I you know, it's the struggle is sometimes really, really good. It's sort of your education. Oh yeah. And, the hustle. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I tell people acting wise and filmmaking wise too especially today, you know, you have a, you have a cell phone, make a film, just shut up and make a film. Don't tell me you can't make it. Don't tell me this guy said, no, I pitched him and he could, if you are, want to be a filmmaker, you want to tell a story, mm -hmm. get out your phone and tell a story. And it, it, you know, there's nothing, just do it. And by the way, don't tell somebody you're going to do it. Don't tell somebody what it is. Mm -hmm. Do it because the same, like if I said to you, I have a really great idea for a script. Um, your response to me, which is what JJ has always done for me, is write it. Because if I tell you, if I go, all right, Alex, here's what I'm, I'm thinking about this, 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 and then you go, oh, that's amazing. That's incredible. I love it. Oh my gosh. Okay. Now I've gotten the reaction that I would have gotten that yeah. would have carried me mm -hmm. through the entire arduous, long, lonely process of writing a script. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I would have been that energy the need for that reaction, that the need mm -hmm. for some sort of, um, praise or, or somebody saying that sucks or whatever, I w that would have carried me enough to write the, the thing. Now I've gotten that reaction. I don't have to do it. And that's what I think is, is what hurts a lot of filmmakers. That's, okay. that's, yeah. that's actually, you know? that's a great, that's uh, yeah, you're right. Because if a lot of times as writers and as creators, if you, if you, you give an idea out and they go, that's great, you should do something. I'm like, yeah, it is great. Yeah. But I, then you don't want to, Right. It takes you longer to write. Yeah. And you already got the reaction that you're hoping to get at the end. Right. You know, it's tough. Like I have this graphic novel uh, called Dream Jumper, which mm -hmm. is I'm really proud of. Um, mm -hmm. Scholastic uh, put it out. I partnered with a, an amazing illustrator and storyteller, Lucas Turnblum. We are book two is coming out in September. Mm -hmm. It's called Dream Jumper. My son had a dream. Mm -hmm. He woke up, had a nightmare. He was like 13. I said, Ben, what, what, what happened? What is it? Tell me. And he goes, it was like I was a superhero. I go, well, okay, cool. What, what? And he says, it wasn't even my dream. I was like a superhero able to jump in and out of my friend's dreams and save them from their worst nightmares. Oh, that's genius. Isn't that genius? <laughs> genius. So I was like, yeah, I'm like, you're not going to bed. Stay up. We're going to pay for college. I yeah, was so <laughs> yeah, you know, right? Like, I'm like saying, why isn't this a $100 million movie? Like, what's right. going on? <laughs> so, so cut to a year and a half later, the book is in every school oh, uh, scholastic awesome. book fair. Paramount uh, uh, optioned it. They're they're making a movie out of it. Oh, that's it's, awesome! Uh, yeah, and book two is coming out in September. But my my point of bringing it up, not just for you know to promote it and tell people to buy Dream Jumper now, yes. is <laughs> um, also is that 
Lucas, I, I met Lucas at Comic-Con. He's an award-winning illustrator and he's sitting there and he's signing and I go up to him and I go, Hey man, you know, he, we had done some stuff with my charity before and I, and I said hello to him and I said, Hey, what do you think of this idea? And he had the same reaction you just did. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, that's genius. Mm -hmm. And he said, we're going to write this whole thing. So over the course of a year, he illustrated the entire thing. That's 230 pages that's of 248 pages of mm -hmm. like, you know, four pictures per page. He mm -hmm. did all this work. Mm -hmm. And then we went out and looked for a publisher. <laughs> Which is That's kind of the way, like what you just said, it's yeah. kind of the way you should do it. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, if you're going to do it, I mean, it's hard. It's all on spec. Yep. But we did it and it, and it paid off. You know? I, I always, I always feel that even when you do stuff on spec per se, it never, it's never fruitless. Generally right. speaking, it's either, either you're going to get, you know, if you, if you go out and make a feature film, even if it stinks, yeah. you've made a feature film, you're ahead of the game and you can show people like, Hey, I produce something and. Blah blah blah, and you and, and God knows what connections you can make or what kind of yes. relationships you could build off of that. And it's it's that's something I've learned in my 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 term uh, in in this uh, in this little game that we call the film you, industry. You know, you know what's interesting? It's like you go into a pitch meeting, right? Yeah. Or you're trying to sell a film, or you're trying to get financing. Financing is the number one thing, of course. You you try and get financing for a vision that you have, and you want to make make something. Well, the per the person that you're talking to, whether it's a producer, a network person, a, a studio person, whatever, a financier. They want to know that someone has taken a chance on you previous. No one wants to be the first. <laughs> Nobody wants to be the first at the party. Right. So why don't you take a chance on yourself? Nice. Why don't you be the first one? Like if you take your cell phone out and you, you shoot something, shoot something else, shoot something else, shoot something else, and then use iMovie, cut it together, put music to it. Um, you know, you don't even have to, there's no color timing. There's no sweetening of the sound. There's nothing. Yeah. You're just doing what you can do with the technology in your freaking hand. Yes. 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 I'm telling you, suddenly somebody's going to be like, Oh, Alex made a film. Well, he's already made a film. So I'm not the first person. Now right. you're right. the one that yeah. gave you green light. to yeah. make that film. Why are you not taking a chance? It's like having skin in the game. I, I had an app years ago that I created and it was, it was interesting. It's like going out to get financing. People were like, well, if you, do you have money in it? Because if you're not putting money in, if you don't believe in your own product enough to put your own money up, I'm not going to put money up. Right. Makes sense. It's the same thing. And creatively, it's the same thing. If you're taking a chance on yourself, then you're not then, – then that's – I mean it's weird to say, hey, I was the first person who gave myself a break to do – you know what I mean? But, but no, you have to. Perceived. But that it's and, – and, that, and that's another bigger concept is perception. Perception mm -hmm. is very big in this town. It's oh, yeah. extremely big in this town. Whether it's the truth or not, the perception is is something different. And look, I, I get hired as a supermodel. Do I look like a supermodel? No. <laughs> but the perception is <laughs> uh, exactly, exactly that I am ripped and I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> it's called CGI. <laughs> we'll fix it in post. I'll we'll have another cheeseburger. <laughs> exactly. Now uh, you talk. You talk. You talked a little bit about JJ, man, and you you guys grew up together. Yeah, we met when we were four or five oh, in Jesus. elementary school. Literally, yeah. you literally grew up together. Yeah, and he's my oldest friend. He's my closest friend. I, I say friend. He's a brother. He's my, yeah. We're like brothers. And, sure. and you can't, you know, really – people say, oh, it's so lucky. As a, he's a filmmaker. He wants to hire – I'm like, you know what? All that stuff is icing on the cake. I know that sounds crazy because – No, it's it, but it's so, true. Yeah, but he's so successful. And yes – a guy like that to be working with over and over again is such a blessing, but forgetting all of it, I, 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 he's gotten me through and I've gotten him through, you know, stuff that friends get each other through. And, and right. he's been there for me through all the great stuff. He's my closest close. I love him so much and I'm lucky to have him in my life. Yeah. And, and the thing, a lot of people from the outside always look into like, Oh my God, you, you're be like your best friends with JJ Abrams. And like, but at the end of the day for you, your perspective is not, J.J. Abrams. He's like, he's my bud. He's my dude. Yeah. I've been like grown up with him. I've, I've seen stuff that I can never say because we grew up together since we were four. I mean, that's what. Yeah, I would. Not, I, yeah, exactly. Uh, but you're that's yeah, his. I, that's your buddy. You know. Yes. Yes. I mean, it, it, and you know, it shows that the the paths cross on set when you know we're shooting Star Wars and Star Wars. You know, yeah. both of us are like, we're what gonna, the we're, hell are we doing? We're you gonna know, get. Both. We're gonna get into Star Wars. Yeah, but <laughs> crazy like. First of all, Alias, Mission Impossible, sure. Felicity, like all this crazy, amazing I mean, stuff. It's insane. It's insane. And, and there's nothing better than being and working. I mean, I, I use the term I'm, I'm using. You can't see, but my hands, I'm doing the quotes because uh -huh. it's not work when I'm working with JJ. Right, right. right. Uh, it's not work anyway. But anyway, um, and 
I, I do a take, and then he walks up to me, he whispers in my ear, he's like, oh, yeah, that was the worst thing in the world. Let's just go again. I mean, I was like, <laughs> that's the best. What's better than that? That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we just have a blast together. And, I, you know, again, I'm just so lucky to be working, period, let alone on projects like that. And then you put on top of it all, the most important thing is that I'm with my best friend. Forget about it. Yeah. I mean, life, life doesn't get better as far as a professional relationship is concerned. Right. No. It really doesn't. Now, with all that, you've had a lot of success in your career, but I'm sure there must have been a point or two in your career that things were a little bit rougher. And, and have you ever thought of of walking away from the business when it just got too tough or if or, or those tough parts how did you overcome them uh yeah you know it, it is really really tough and i've and uh it it mainly at the beginning of my career i've been very very i'm knocking you hear me knocking wood i do um, uh i've been very very lucky and and uh, and i hope that i'm you know i do a good job i must be doing something right but at the same time, yeah, you're always looking for your next job. You know, um, there's a term, there's a, I forgot who quoted this, but it's like, you want an actor to complain, give him a job. And that's, <laughs> that's, it's just so true. And the same is with the director or producer or whatever. And, um, so the toughest parts I think were really early in my career because I didn't want my, I didn't want my career to dictate my life. So I met the most incredible woman in the, in the entire world, my mm-hmm. wife, Elizabeth, and you know, you, you go, okay, well, my career's not where it is. I mean, I had no job, no car, no money, no credit cards, no nothing, no hope <laughs> for, I mean, no, no, not hope, but, um, no, uh, prospects in the future. I didn't, sure, sure. you know, I'm not going to tell my landlord, Hey, I had a good audition today. I mean, that's <laughs> yeah. And she said, um, and she said, Oh, this is a win. I'm, I'm, I'm going to hook on to this guy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we have a piece of, we have a piece of art. Exactly. I was like, <laughs> what were you thinking? And that's where, you know, she loved you. You know, it's we have this piece of art that I made in our house. It's from a, a quote from Willy Wonka, which is my favorite movie. Mm-hmm. And the quote is, hey, uh, "Hold on tight. I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen." They're in the elevator, <laughs> and he tells he tells Charlie to push that button. Up until now, I've pushed every button except for that one, Charlie. And then he pushes it, and he goes, "Hold on tight. I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen." <laughs> and that's exactly what happened at the beginning of our relationship. Is I said, "I have no idea how this is going to." But it's it, we love each other and we're going to make it work. And so at the beginning of my career, it was going to commercial auditions and hoping that the commercial runs and hoping that you get residuals. Mm-hmm. And at the meantime, I'm, I had a frozen yogurt business. I was a telemarketer. I was a waiter. I was a busboy. I I did everything I could possibly do. And I am. I'm a hustler. I'm mm-hmm. not, never going to let my family down. And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so the stakes just become higher and higher um, as you go throughout life and you want more, or, you know, you just want to be able to do fun things. All of that comes with, um, risks and responsibilities. And I, you know, I'm balancing between, I know some actors that like they'll, they'll make some money on something and then that's it. That's it. like, they hunker down and they go, that's it. I, I'm a bit of a risk taker and, uh, I, you know, I'm frugal and I save what I can, but I've got three beautiful boys and charity is extremely important to me mm-hmm. with, um, you know, with my, my oldest son is epilepsy. And so we do everything for the epilepsy community. And so I've got a lot of my time is devoted to, uh, the, you know, the epilepsy foundation of America and my foundation, talk about it.org. And so it's like, you got to balance everything. I've got some people say, how do you do it all? It's like, well, I just, I enjoy every moment, man. I'm, I'm having a great time. The funny two things. Um, my mother actually works for the epilepsy foundation in South Florida. Wow. Uh, yeah. So she's uh, she's worked with him for God, probably like three, four, five years, six years, something like that. Uh, so I know I've heard a lot about epilepsy and all that stuff from my mom and what yeah. she goes through, and it's uh, and it's a challenge just having that foundation work because <laughs> there's a lot a lot of donations and things like that. Uh, yeah, and to help also, all. yeah, and also stigma. There's a huge stigma attached to epilepsy, and that's yep. what um, if people go to talkaboutit.org. You'll see I've got every celebrity on there. I'm going to Orlando tomorrow mm-hmm. um, to speak in front of uh, the Synovian is this amazing pharmaceutical company. And they, they they are sponsoring the telethon. I do a telethon every year. Mm-hmm. And this year is the second second annual. And so it's the second time. But we did last year. We raised over a quarter of a million dollars. That's awesome. Eight hours straight. And you'll see like your favorite musicians and 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 uh, actors and uh magicians and (laughs) everything you can imagine. Plus great, you know, doctors talking about what's new in the pipeline and everything. So epilepsy is very misunderstood. It needs, there's this huge stigma attached to it that unfortunately we need to forget about and find a cure and, and let people know that they're not alone. And that's, that's what my, my message is. I'm doing, if I could plug for a second, I'm doing 
this amazing auction mm -hmm. and I have these guitars, the Gibson guitars, the Gibson gave me these guitars. I have the most incredible people, finger paint, hand paint and sign. And the money's going to go to epilepsy. It's um, awesome. From like Lisa Kudrow to Maroon five to nice. Courtney, Courtney love and Francis Cobain. Um, Brian Johnson from ACDC, uh, just uh, Howard Stern, amazing guitars. If, if you, if anybody's interested, um, it's, it, you go to proxy bid, mm -hmm. P R O X I B I D proxy dot com mm -hmm. slash Hollywood auction. Well, we'll put all that in the show notes too. You definitely give me all the links to all that stuff. We'll put it all in the show notes to make sure everybody could, uh, to go there. Uh, and also the second thing is my wife was very similar to your wife. I was broke. Very little prospects living yeah. living in South Florida, which is not the mecca of the film industry by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, exactly. And 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 I said, and I said, what what, what made like what made you think this was a good investment? Right. <laughs> and she's like, I don't know. I guess you know. I just I'm like, because you're playing the really long game. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Because if I mean, this is this is a really long game you're playing, and she's like, I know it'll pay off. I have I have faith it'll pay off eventually. <laughs> that is so funny. I know. You know what? They are, they take the biggest gamble. And by the way, vice versa. I mean, like, yeah. you know, um, it's not just I'm hitching a ride to this person. I hitched a ride to my wife. Man. Amen. I, mean, I got Amen. so lucky. And thankfully, you know, we've, we've got three beautiful boys. And, uh, you know, obviously with Dream Jumper, I'm taking advantage of my boy's creativity in, yes. in the best way. So. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's amazing what a good woman can do. Yep. To, to, to schmucks like us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> so uh, another big show that you worked on, man, that I, I'm a, I was just I, I literally just I think less than a year ago, uh, my wife and I actually watched the whole thing again was Alias. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was kind of like a revolutionary show at the time. Yeah. I mean, I've been a part of these shows. I've been very fortunate, especially in the genre. You know, I'm going around doing all these comic cons and mm -hmm. Alias is one that really did touch a nerve. And at that time, again, J.J. Abrams, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, he. Uh, just really, it was something really forward thinking. It was, re and, and Jennifer Garner, I mean, man, yeah. did she kill it in that mm -hmm, role. Mm -hmm. Um, but Victor Garber and, and, uh, Michael Vartan and Carl Lumley and, and, uh, Ron Rifkin and all these guys. I mean, it was, I was, it was such a great experience. I had just come off of working on, on Felicity with some amazing people, Scott Speedman, Scott. Foley, oh yeah. Yeah. Good friends of mine, especially Foley and Robert Patrick Benedict mm -hmm. who's on Supernatural mm -hmm. and, and Carrie Russell and Amanda Foreman and all these great people. And then I go and I'm and now I'm working with the old guard. People that not not Jen and mm -hmm. Michael, but these other seasoned actors who really appreciate the opportunity for good material, mm -hmm. to have a, a steady gig. And I learned a lot from each one of them. Not that I needed to be humbled or anyone needed to straighten me out at all, but you pick up things from other people. Filmmakers, um, Ken Olin ran that show. I mean, he was amazing. Mm -hmm. But it was like I just realized it's it's all from the top down, man. You work with great people and great product comes from it. And um, I mean, JJ sets a tone that is just second to none. That show was feature quality every single it was, day. It was. It was. It was. That's basically what got a mission impossible, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise, like sat down and watched like the first two seasons. He's like, OK, this guy can do it. That's exactly right. Um, you know, he, he and he went to the bat. He went to bat to break in as a fi feature filmmaker on that level to do the next Mission Impossible. You need a guy like Tom Cruise to step up and say, no, no, he can do it. He's doing this on a weekly basis with a budget that is one one hundredth of what we're about to give him. You know, so right. trust him. And sure enough, that's what that's what, you know, they did. And, and I had a little role in Mission Impossible. But mm -hmm. um, Tom Cruise, by the way, just so I can say it, please, such a pro. That He's amazing. so much fun to work with. He is such a great guy. And I, and I again, I, I know him, you know, but he treats everybody with such respect and such love. And, and he's just so good, man. That's another guy that I would love to work with. Any opportunity I get, I'll do craft service on a movie that he does. He's just great. He's so great. I mean, I've heard that. I've heard that from a lot of, of a lot of pros in the, in the business too. Cause yeah. they just, they say he's just, but I mean, when you work, when you're Tom Cruise, I mean, you've worked at the highest level since basically when you were in your twenties yeah. and at the highest, highest level with the best directors in the business. And you could True. just, I mean, how can you not be amazing <laughs> at a certain point? You're like, Jesus. Yeah, but there's also he, ego. He, yeah. I need stuff like yeah, that. But yeah. He's, he's the biggest star in the world outside of, you know, uh, some of these other guys. Um, mm -hmm. 
Uh, but but you kind of go, wait a minute. He's got to have an attitude. Like he can't be. Oh, no. Of course. Of course. Yeah. And he does. He is. He's just that guy. He's so, so, so great. Tom Hanks, same thing. You know, and I've been so fortunate to work with some of the most amazing people. Yeah. You worked um, with, you worked with Tom Hanks on Lady Killer, right? Yeah. Lady Killers. I didn't get to work with him on camera together, mm-hmm. uh, but he was at the table read and at the premiere and everything. And I worked with, you know, J.K. Simmons and, and some incredible people, the Coen brothers. I mean, so, which, which was my next uh, question. How is it being on a Coen brothers set? <laughs> it was, it's, it's so much fun. It's so much fun. You have two directors, mm-hmm. which is a little, can be, I've seen in other experiences, confusing. And mm-hmm. I direct um, uh, commercials and, and uh, TV stuff with my uh, business partner, Brad Savage. Mm-hmm. You know, there are times when I'm like, all right, Brad, why don't you take this? Because you don't want to give two people giving notes to an actor is really tough. No, it's rough. Yeah. Yeah. So like get your notes together real quick and then have, you know, send one of you out (laughs) to talk to the actors. And I mean, they do it so seamlessly. They're so great. They so trust the actors. They'll give you a note and then you interpret that note and make it your own. I mean, just, you know, give them, give them what they want, but they don't give you, they don't say, say it like this. I mean, it's like, <laughs> you know, obviously that's a, that's a, a directing one-on-one, but they're so good, man. Oh, that was a dream. Was dream. It, it must've yeah. been a dream to work. I mean, you have worked with a hell of a, I mean, your, your resume is pretty insane. It's insane. <laughs> with, By the way, Albert Brooks, I did the muse. I mean, I have tiny. Oh, I love, I love the muse. I love that movie. I yeah. Love- I played, I played the hotel security guard. When yes, you Albert- did. <laughs> Albert's in the hallway yes. and Sharon Stone and Albert Brooks. And I'm in that. What, what am I doing there? And I had a blast in Albert Brooks. Again, I just only had one day on that movie. Genius. Learned so much from an idol of mine. I love that guy. I mean, I, one of my favorites of his is Defending Your Life. Defending Your Life is absolute. How about real life? Yeah, which one's real life? Is that oh, a, I hello? Was I that? love turning you on to something. What is that? What, what real life? Hold on, I'm, I'm writing it down as we speak. Yes, real life. Charles Grodin um, stars in that. It is. Oh no! Wait a minute. Epic. Is that the, is the hold on? Is it the real? Life? Is, is that the one? Charles Grodin so, stars in. Who who else is in that? Um, it, it's it's one of Albert Brooks' first movies. Oh, it's first. It's, okay, it's not one of the later first. ones. Okay, okay. It's incredible. Okay. It's it's where it's back, like the basically it's the birth of reality TV. Um, he, he plays a a documentary filmmaker who goes to Arizona and he's going to, he's going to watch and film these, this family with these helmet cameras. It's unbelievably hilarious. Oh my God. That sounds, well, I mean, I'm a huge, I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of of Albert Brooks. Oh, you'll love this movie. He's a genius. This is one of his best. Defending Your Life is maybe a perfect film. I, I love Defending Your Life. And if you guys, if, if guys are listening, if you haven't seen Defending Your Life, it's with Meryl Streep uh, and Albert Brooks. And they, they it's about what happens when you die. And you have to kind of defend your life in court to either move on to heaven or get sent back down and relive another life. Basically. Yeah, Rip Torn. Oh, Rip Torn is amazing. It's so brilliant. Oh, the movie is so good. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Like, even like I'm not going to spoil this, but he he in this sort of purgatory kind of not purgatory but in this way station place, um, you know where you don't know if you're going to go forward or not. The, like everything is the best it can be, and you can. And he's like, "Oh my god, yeah. like, it's the best! <laughs> like every bite is better than the next." Like, Everything's like yeah, wherever whatever restaurant you go into, it's just everything tastes. He's like, "How does it taste?" He's like, "It's the best you've ever had." Like really, like every so everything he tastes. He's like, yeah. "Oh my god, this is, can I can I take?" And he takes like ten pies back yeah. to his back to his uh, to his room in his hotel yeah, room. And, but, it's but so the, brilliant. The other the other thing about that movie is I, I watch that movie and then I'm 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 not kind of angry. I'm so jealous. <laughs> After the end, I'm like. He's so brilliant. I mean, they do a thing. Remember the past lodge mm-hmm, pavilion? Mm-hmm. You read my mind. I was going to bring that up. That is so yeah. brilliant. <laughs> so brilliant. You go into a little like peeping Tom peep show kind of booth yeah. and you watch <laughs> like watching a movie. You're watching scenes from past lives. You're watching yourself uh-huh. as a like, remember, he was like eaten you know, by he was eaten. He was an eaten savage in uh, yeah. in Africa somewhere from yeah, back yeah. in the day. And oh, yeah. While Meryl, oh. while Meryl Streep's like, you know, Lancelot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and she kills it. I mean, she, well, she kills it in anything. She, she she could read a telephone book and she's amazing. Oh, uh, but she was also so just pure and beautiful and oh, wonderful and yeah. sweet. And oh, it's so good. It's such a good movie. So, guys, 
Defending your life. It, it's, yeah, I'm, defending it's streaming life. So, somewhere. It's streaming. So far, homework. Uh, big ass spider. Yes. <laughs> life. Real life. Uh, lady killers. Group sex. Yes. In and, real life. And then the little movie called Star Wars. Whatever. But we're, we're going to get to that in a second. Don't worry. Because right. I'm. I'll tell you all about my Star Wars in a minute, but we'll get to that in a second. Trust me. I'm, I'm, I got to hold the audience off a little bit because yeah, yeah. I'm sure they're excited to hear about it. But I want to talk. Oh, so I have a couple other more uh, more in, like Oprah style questions for you. OK. Uh, <laughs> so as an actor, do you prefer television or feature films? That's a great question. So, you know, as an actor, I love the ability to kind of not correct, but to adjust where my characters go, where my characters, you know, like on, uh, you know, Matt Parkman. I mean, there were, there were things in heroes that I was able to do knowing, okay, well next episode I can make him or I can plant this seed here with my eyes and the mm-hmm. way I say something. And, um, knowing that the story is going to arc this way or that way, I've got 22 episodes this season and mm-hmm. hopefully, uh, you know, years and years to go as a, in features, you're making a choice that's going to live forever. And yeah. You know, so there's a finite amount of time and takes and you better nail it and you better really have like, this is who I am at the same time. You don't want to be one note. So, and also as we, as you know, we shoot out of order. So you really have to have in your head what is going on in this script and features. And it's a little bit more of a difficult process. The other thing is it's also really tedious on a big movie. You shoot a one and a half to two pages a day. Mm Mm-hmm. And there's so, <laughs> a lot of pages to a script, especially with special effects and action and stuff. And so, when, when, you know, when you're off TV, you don't have that luxury. So you're at six, eight pages a day. You're moving. You're cooking. But you also know, OK, you know, I didn't really get the, the point across here that I love my family as much as I want to. And, well, and it's tough. I don't know, it's a tough question because, look, on Alias, there's 10 characters to service. Mm-hmm. I'm only going to get – I'm one-tenth of that show. Mm-hmm. So – you, you, again, it goes back to the feature thing. You better make an impression in those three, four, five minutes that they're going to give you per episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I try and steal every moment that I'm given. Mm-hmm. I really do. I mean, I try and make the most of everything. I'm like, I, I, I feel like I make taffy. You know, they give me a little <laughs> piece of candy and they stretch it. As much as I, and then in the editing room, they're like, my God, get to it, Grunberg. <laughs> <laughs> now, what do you look for when you're working with a director as an actor? Uh, as an actor, I want the director to hear me as much as he wants or she wants me to hear her. Mm-hmm. Um, that's really, really important. So, you know, I watch someone like Larry Trilling, who's brilliant at this. JJ is brilliant at this. Matt is great at this. They'll let an actor find their moment, you know, and you can do it in blocking rehearsal, or, you know, and, and I'm talking about prepared actors. Don't come to the set, not prepared, and then start crying about you know, or complaining about the dialogue or whatever. You have plenty of time to do that before. Do your homework and then call the director on the phone. I want to be a director who, by the way, is also open to hearing my interpretation and, and doesn't just have a singular vision. This is the way I see it. This is the way it's got to be done. And that's it. No, like I really want a director who is is open to the collaborative thing. And no, this is who you, who you hired, man. Let's have fun together, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, 99.9% of the time, I'm going to give you what's on the page. I mean, that's that's my job. But at the same time, I want to be able to bring some surprises to it um, and don't over talk. Like if, if, if you come up to me, I mean, these are like the minutia. But if if you give me a note, uh, I want to be able to go, hey, Alex, I got it. Got it. And mm-hmm. walk away. Let me show you. <laughs> I got it. If I say got it and you go, you know, because I, I, I don't want to think anything. And I'm like, OK, OK, cool. And then you go, you know, because this character, I'm like, oh, my God, shut the <laughs> And let me do my job because, by the way, I have dialogue in my head. I want to now. I'm thinking and I'm interpret, interpreting. Hey, maybe I can hit this harder. I can make this mo- more, you know. And also, give me a reading. Like I'm one of those actors. Where I'm like, you know, tell me, don't not, you know, don't dictate how I should do it. But we don't have time for egos. We don't have time to mess around. If you have a good idea, come up and go. You know, when you think, like, go up on this, like, get a little emotional here. Like maybe, you know, let's cut to the chase and let's go right away. Don't take too much time between takes. I also love. Uh, you know, when, when I hear a director go, okay, still rolling back to the top. Let's keep going. Like, cause when you cut the DP, you know, bless him. He's like, Oh, you I know, gotta, the gotta move that light. Could have been better. And let me adjust this light. And so I actually, by, by the way, it's... great impression of a DP. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they all, One, they all speak. They all speak with Eastern German accents. 
Yes, always. <laughs> always. <laughs> Whether they are or not. Exactly. Um, they, they you know, all, they, they, they're all yeah. called Vilmos. <laughs> right. They embody, they're like the Nazi that, that is on set going, I will have a better idea. I need 20 minutes. Like, I need oh. to, which is really, which is an hour. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> and then you're sitting there going, son of a bitch. <laughs> and then you've forgotten what note you were told. And, right. you know, it's a, it's a balance, you know. It, but it is, it again, is. it comes with experience. It goes back to your initial question of like, you know, how did you know and how do you get better? And it's just with experience. It's experience. If you're starting out, you're a filmmaker right now, mm-hmm. shoot the shitty version of what you want to do on your cell phone now. Mm-hmm. Shoot it again. Shoot it again. Shoot something else. Shoot something else. Shoot something else. My my son is Taekwondo, uh, black belt. He wants to get into uh, stunt coordinating and everything. And he's just shooting a ton of really bad fight scenes with his with his karate buddies. Because mm-hmm. – then you're ready when a director goes, hey, I have a, a bar fight I need help with. Uh, you're like, sure. Uh, I've already shot a th- three bad versions of it. Now I'll give you the good version, you know? So let me ask you a question because I'm sure you've you've met a couple of stunt guys in your day. Oh, yeah. uh, so is it <laughs> – I want the audience to understand this about stunt people. First of all, they're all a little tweaked in the best way possible. Yes. Uh, they all are. I've never met a stunt person who's not. And yep. and they're all in a great way, but they're all a little tweaked. And anytime I've ever asked them to do something, I'll go, Hey, you see that you see that building over there? Okay, I want you to jump off maybe the tenth floor. They're like, can I jump off the top? I want to jump off the top. Can I jump off the top? Can I jump off the top, please? Right. Is am I am I or am I wrong? Every single no, one. I've no, never look. I've never heard a uh, never heard a stuck guy go, That's a little high for me. Can we Oh no. <laughs> I mean the best Yeah, it's so true. It's like, but that's what drives them they want to make my stunt guys they yeah. want to make me look mark ricardi wants me to look as good as i can possibly look i mean that's what his job is to so if someone goes dude how did you do that you know yeah. tom williams you know i've got these two stunt guys um and it's like it depends on my weight and what i what i have to do so if mm-hmm. i'm a, if I'm driving a car, doing this. I'll call this guy or that guy. And these guys are also stunt coordinators and they're filmmakers in their own right. And um, the, the biggest and best one that I've ever worked with is Simon Ree. Mm-hmm. Simon and his brother, Philip, they 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 did best of the best years ago. Um, oh, best of the best, Eric Roberts. But, yeah, Eric Roberts. So Simon starred in that movie with Philip. And um, and I just did a, it's a karate movie, uh, kids karate movie. Um, but it's. These guys are pros. Uh, Simon was um, Jackie Chan's stunt double on a bunch of things, and, mm-hmm. and I brought him in on group sex. I brought him in a bunch of things. They're just perfect. They're the best. And, mm-hmm. you know, like you're exactly right. Like, uh, by the way, so Heroes Reborn, I'll give you a stunt story. Um, I love driving. I'm a car guy. I'm a, I'm a driving nut. Mm-hmm. And so I've got this uh, um, Crown Vic, and I'm I'm driving, and they go, okay. And I've got an, I've got an actress in the car with me, and and they're like, all right, so the camera's down low and we're about a quarter mile away and we want to see you approaching. But then when you go by camera, we really want to get a sense of the of the um, speed. So I do it and I'm going like 70 miles an hour. They close the street off. The police close sure, the street sure, off. Sure. We're talking about half a mile to qu- three quarters of a mile, Sure, you know, in all. And they go, just hit it, uh, you know, and, and you don't have to go that fast, you know, because the, the, the depth perception, it'll. So I do it and they go, yeah, that's not that fast. Let's do it again. <laughs> I do it again. Now I'm going 85. Yeah. yeah. It's not that bad. I'm like, all right, guys, this is it. And you're going to love it. And I turn to her and I go, hold on tight. And it's like, so stunt guys aren't crazy. I'm crazy <laughs> too. I hit it at like 125 miles an hour. Oh, Jesus Christ, dude. Yes. That's, Jesus Christ, I mean, Christ. seriously, dude. That's a bit, that's a bit much. <laughs> yeah. And I went past camera and it was just like, <laughs> and they just loved, they were like, yeah, that's it. Of course and, it is. <laughs> yeah. Should I have been doing that? No. No, I absolutely love it. not. I love Abs- it. There's also they could have just undercranked a bit. <laughs> yeah, you think so? I'm just saying at 85, you could have shot at 20 frames. You would have been all right. <laughs> Point made. Right. I'm, I'm just saying. Yeah. Just say it. <laughs> Now, so you've told us a lot of amazing stories about all the positive times you've had on set. Can you tell us one horrendous story without naming names? <laughs> uh, ooh, a horrendous story. Yeah, without naming names. Or, or, um, or movies. Faye Dunaway. Um, <laughs> was, I was on the set of Alias. Yeah. And uh, uh, <laughs> I love that you just- for some reason <laughs> – the uh-huh. actor on the other side, and I'm not going to say, you know, who it was, Faye Dunaway, uh-huh. <laughs> was uh, she just decided that she was going to make faces at me while I was doing my side. Why? 
I don't know. <laughs> I do not know. And she, we got her side because she's a good actress. All right. Anyway, and then we, <laughs> we turn the camera around and they're on me and or my side, whatever. And off camera, there I am looking at her and it's nothing funny about the scene. Uh-huh. Um, and she's making faces. She's making like these really weird elastic faces with her mouth. And I'm like, what a bitch, man. I but, mean, but you told her, please stop doing this. Of course, I told the director. The uh-huh. director went over and told her and said, "What are you doing? Stop! What are you doing? Uh-huh. That doesn't make sense." And it's oh, uh, she and she kept doing it. Yep. Oh, son of a bitch. Yeah, I mean, and, and very, you know, very famous. I don't. Again, I don't want to say her name, Faye Dunaway, but <laughs> very famous actress who I respect in a huge way. I'm like, I don't know. This must be did, some. Did you do process? So, did you do something to her? her? Did you do something to her on the set that day? <laughs> no, no, she didn't. She didn't just do it to me. She did to other actors too. Oh, she's just being a bitch. Got it. Yep. Got it. Wow. It's a, yeah. that's that's pretty pretty remarkable. <laughs> yeah, I mean it makes for a great story. It and, does. And again, I am not one to sling mud. I don't want to talk out of school and I would never tell you who it actually was, Faye Dunaway. But right. <laughs> I, that, you know, I just I just want to make sure that I'm clear about that. Fair enough. Of, of course, of course, cuz you wouldn't want to hurt your reputation in the business, I understand. No. Really. No. I mean every one of that, you know, actors movies i want to be in 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 the future absolutely so you did this little independent film called star wars yeah <laughs> with uh with an uh, uh just an old school buddy of yours uh jj yeah. uh just a, you know just got together got a couple friends together and decided to go make a movie yeah uh, let's, let's, you know get in the van let's, let's, what let's go put on a show so, <laughs> um, so that happened the same way that, it, that lost happened you know i was the pilot and lost and yeah. JJ is doing these huge things. And of course I, my first call, the first thing I say on the phone is, Oh my God, dude, congratulations. This is going to be huge. You're going to make this incredible Mm -hmm. because he does with everything he does. And then the second thing I say, and he knows it's coming is what am I playing? (laughs) What am I doing? (laughs) Right. right. I planted, I planted that in his head and he's, he goes off and he's writing and planted it in his head again. And he's like, I know I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. And you know, it's hard. There's so much on his plate. And I mean, yeah, he's trying to like find a, a spot for you in star Wars. Yeah, I mean that's the last thing you're right. thinking about. Sure, sure. Yet, yeah. But yeah, but yet, but but yeah. the friendship is over. But the friendship is over if I don't get a part of Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, no, but it, it's the idea of look, and I say this on everyone because he he just keeps doing bigger and bigger stuff. I'm like, you know what? This one I really mean it. Like this one we have to do together. <laughs> and he'll he'll call me and go, Hey, I'm doing something. I really want you to be in it. I want to hang out. We're gonna be at Pine Pinewood Studios together, oh. shooting Star Wars. I mean, oh. I. If if it was L.A., I'd be right there next to him without any job on the movie. I don't care. I want to be with my buddy. Sure. But this is Star Wars. Anyway, he says, I think I found something for you. It could be really cool. And I fly to London not knowing what I'm going to do. And I get there huh. and I walk. They were having Chinese. Uh, it was like, you know, before they started shooting and huh. the whole cast and was sitting in this restaurant and I walked in. Oh. And uh, I forgot who said it, but somebody yelled out, hey, there's uh, Snap Wexley. Oh, Larry Kasdan. Uh-huh. Like, there's Snap Wax I'm like, oh my God, there's Larry Kasdan. <laughs> I was about to, I was going to ask you, like, what's it like with fucking Larry Kasdan, you know, Carrie, you know, God rest yeah. her soul, and and, yeah. and Harrison, and, all, and Kathy Kennedy. And Kathy, Kathy Kennedy. <laughs> she's one of the, if not the best producer ever. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and you're right. like, I'm so lucky to even be here. There's eating cast. Chinese, eating Chinese. <laughs> yeah, but the whole cast is there. I didn't know who most of these people were. Right. I mean, didn't I, you know? I, I I just didn't. And uh, yeah, the, you mean the young cast, the new the new guys coming up. You mean? Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Um, and so I I was like, hey guys, hey, how's everybody doing? And uh, he says that name, and I'm like, that sounds kind of cool. I don't know what that is, but that sounds cool. And then if, over the course of dinner, you know, they're like, yeah, you're an X-wing fighter, and I was like, what? Oh, an X-wing fighter? Man. What? Yeah. <laughs> It's basically it's basically a childhood dream, basically at that point. Yeah, I mean, what do you do as a kid when you're thinking when you're playing Star Wars with your buddy JJ? You know, you and you know, at fourteen, what were we doing? We were in his room pretending we were X wing fighters, or sure, you know, we. It's just one of those things that that's the role you want. Now, stormtrooper, of course, would have been unbelievably cool to be even an extra anywhere, something. But to actually do, to get to do that, unbelievable, just ridiculous. It, 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 so, what's like the, like, what's the coolest story you have from the set? Like walking on the set and just like, what's the I coolest? Just told this, I just told this at Salt Lake City Comic Con uh-huh. um, 
uh, which, and by the way, I'm going to be in Dubai at the Middle East Film and Comic Con, and then going to uh, Indie Pop at uh, in Indianapolis. So I'm Jesus. really excited about. You I've have. Got this, I've got this new show with Kevin Smith called Geeking Out. So yeah. I'm like now going around all these conventions and stuff, which I never did before, and, I, and I'm just absolutely loving it, man. Mm-hmm, oh, mm-hmm. I love geeking out with the, with the people at the, uh, at the shows and it's I was just, I was going to ask you about Comic-Con next but so tell us yeah. tell us your story tell your story uh your So start with I just just told this on my panel and uh, it, it, it's it was just walking onto the set of the Millennium Falcon um mm. was a religious experience for me you know <laughs> I, I've been to Israel and I had more I was more emotional walking onto a fake Millennium Falcon than, than, you know, than, than the wailing wall in Israel. I mean, for me, it was so amazing. And then to be in the rebel base with these guys and, you know, you, everything was secretive, you know, don't take any pictures. You can't say anything. You can't, you know, obviously don't take anything and, and you have to be cloaked in a big black cloak. And, you know, because there were drones and there's paparazzi and all of it, all of it, all of it, 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 it just, when I walked on that set and I was like, I am standing in a place that is, you know, again, it's hollowed ground. It's hollowed ground. Yeah. Even though it wasn't the actual Millennium Falcon from the seventies, it's no. still hollowed ground. Yeah. And it's a replica and it's, you know, it's, they, they remade it and they remade it perfectly. And, and then, you know, getting up two stories up and being locked into my X-wing Mm-hmm. And it's, it's basically like riding a bull. I'm on a jib. I mean, yeah. I'm on a, a yeah. gimbal mm-hmm. and they, there's a guy down below with a, with a joystick and he's going up and down and all over. And I've got to say my line. It's just the whole experience was incredible, but walking on the set for the first time and walking around and, you know, sneaking, um, photos with my cell phone that it wasn't supposed to be in my hand, you know, right. those were moments I'll never forget that. And, and, but, but mainly it was, you know, looking at, my best friend and the two of us with our mouths you know, our, our jaws must, on the floor going, what are we doing here? Well, I mean, in, in all honesty though, I mean the, and I, and I, <clears throat> a lot of people, you know, talk about whether they liked it or didn't like it and all that kind of stuff. But I, I loved it. I thought it was, a, I thought it was a great way. And I think he was able to do something that was honestly almost impossible is yeah. to live up to the real Star Wars trilogy, not the, the 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 prequels, but the real Star Wars trilogy, and and bring it up to a new generation. The immense amount of pressure, basically, he's launching an entire new era in Star Wars for twenty odd years coming. They already have yeah. him laid out fifteen years ahead. So the pressure on him. I mean, did he ever talk to you? I mean, he, I have to believe he must have had some stress. I mean, oh, the guy, I mean God, dude. Yes. And, and but a guy, guys like that, guys like Spielberg, guys like JJ, guys, you know, they just, I don't know, they just don't show it. I mean, I, I, I talk about this all the time. How it's just like he's so prepared, mm-hmm. and it, and it starts from the top down. The best directors I've worked with, and JJ is absolutely at the very top in my mind it's number mm-hmm. one mm-hmm. the people i've worked with there he's so prepared and, and and he's so relaxed that it's almost like like you know there, there were nights when uh like we would rap we spent every moment together right so we go to dinner and we'd be walking around london and and i'm like dude you have 7 a.m tomorrow morning you're shooting at a pretty amazing scene in star wars shouldn't you be at home looking at storyboards and doing the thing and he's like yeah no i got it i got it I mean, I'm, I'm good. And, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. And he was good. It wasn't like he was winging it. He does his homework. He's so prepared and so brilliant. And so it seems effortless, but it's not, you know, that's, that's the thing. And, and God, you know, I have to say like, I, I direct, I direct commercials and I direct a bunch of, you know, things. And my favorite thing is working with actors and stuff, but there is really a gift and you can, I'm sure attest to this Mm -hmm. between making something that could work on the, on the, on a television or a computer and and now on a cell phone Mm -hmm. and making something that can, that is absolutely only suited for a big screen with a big experience and Mm -hmm. having all of the elements. I mean, JJ is so, um, adept at every single one of the arts that goes into making a film. He knows about special effects. He knows about music. He knows about the, I mean, to the point where he's good at all that stuff. And that, that we saw, I saw when I was a kid I and mean, he's just, uh, like it was just super creative. John Favreau, same way Spielberg, the mm-hmm. same way. These guys are, 
there's, they know about every aspect of filmmaking. And I think that's what makes a great director. And then what I think what I think JJ did great with Star Trek and Star Wars is he leaned on the characters. You know, mm-hmm. it was all this mystery about like, oh, they're showing the Millennium Falcon. It's like, dude, we saw that in the seventies. That's the same ship. You right. know, the out the exterior shot. There was like sneak <laughs> shots of that, sneaky shots of this and that. I'm like, what is everybody getting so excited about? Yeah, that's a new ver they just remade that thing. Mm-hmm. But but the characters, and he's so good at keeping secrets and and yes. <laughs> satisfying us in such a great way with the relationships and staying true to what made this the most success. I mean, George Lucas is maybe the most brilliant guy we've ever had in entertainment. I mean, mm-hmm. to, to that it's a family film. You know, it's, like, it's 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 it is it is, you know, and those are themes that resonate with with, uh, I think, all audiences. Yeah, he yeah. Th- he that George definitely tapped into something <laughs> without <laughs> without question. And you were saying that JJ likes to, you know, he likes to uh learn or knows a lot about every aspect of the business. I have a funny Star Wars uh Force Awakens story. My buddy was a, a VFX artist at yeah. at actually at Bad Robot. And huh? and he uh and JJ was walking the halls and he he saw him working on a shot, a very hard shot, and JJ just came in and sat down and talked to him for like 3 hours. Watched him and asked him a thousand questions about what he was doing because he yep. just wanted to know. And, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm learning Nuke." You know, for everybody out there who doesn't know what Nuke is, it's like the industry standard, like visual effects comping uh, program. And he's like, yeah. "Yeah, I'm 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 learning Nuke on the side." Like you don't learn Nuke on the side, but that's yeah, what JJ. No, and I doing. believe me, I know <laughs> what you're talking about because my son uh, works at Bad Robot. J- Jake works at Bad Robot, and. Mm-hmm. I'm like, and that had came up. I don't know anything about Nuke. And suddenly Jake was like, yeah, I got to get this program on Nuke. I got to learn it. And sure enough, there's Jake at home working on it, whatever. But JJ's the same way. Mm-hmm. He's just that guy. And, and he's, but he's talented enough to do it. You know, they say, you know, like I play the drums in my band, right? I have mm-hmm. a band for charity, I play the drums. I act, I write, I, I, but I'm not a master of any of those things. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm trying to get better and better and better at acting. Like, you know, I know <laughs> my limits. JJ is one of those guys that taps into all that stuff and he masters all of it. He's just that talented. I, I he would absolutely, if he heard me say that, roll his eyes and go, oh, come on, shut up. Because he's, <laughs> he's a humble guy. He doesn't want to hear that. But that's really, and, and he's not alone. I mean, all of the guys like that, Matt Reeves. Oh my God, is Matt talented? Mm-hmm. He's so brilliant. These guys are those. That's how. That's what they do. James Gray. Oh my God, Larry. Um, you know, uh, 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 Fong, who's an incredible DP. Mm-hmm. I grew up mm-hmm. with all these guys, and they're amazing. Brian Burke is such an incredible producer. Like he produced Star Wars and all these movies with JJ and Brian and I produced Matt Reeves' student film at USC when he was, you know, his master thesis film. I, but Brian is such. A brilliant filmmaker. He's more like a Joel Silver type guy who's a, so incredible at putting the pieces together. He's so uh, actually he's, he's smarter than Joel. I think he's like, he's like yeah. Joel's, Joel's amazing. I worked with Joel Silver for years. Brian though, it, 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 like Joel, they're so smart. They they know about film history. They know about all this stuff, and you know they're just uh, they're they're brilliant. Now you said you like going around to comic cons, and I, I'm su- I'm su- basically you. You've had your free ticket to Comic Con now. Uh, it's for a while, <laughs> for because yeah. you're on one certain. If you're on one show, if you're a bit character on one show, you can make a career of just running around doing autograph signings at Comic Cons. But yeah. you you have a few, just a few on your resume, yeah. <laughs> just a couple that because uh, I was uh, when I, was, I think I, I don't know where I saw you. I think the reason I I, I wanted to reach out to you is I saw on uh Facebook. He's like, hey, hanging out with the big ass. Spider crew. And I'm like, oh, he knows Greg. I love to talk to Greg. And and um and uh there was like I think there was an ad somewhere for you being at a Comic Con and it had you from Star Wars, you on Star Trek, you on Heroes, like pictures of you. I'm like, son of this guy, you're good. Yeah. You're good at, if everything else falls away, you could do Comic Cons for the rest of your right. life. Exactly. Com- comfortably. Uh, comfortably. Oh, it's it look, I have a uh thanks to JJ, I have this uh headshot that people love and we always sell out of it when i'm at a comic-con and it's and it's a picture of me in star wars and it's and i'm looking straight ahead at this screen and on the screen is me in um you know as uh, as uh, commander finnegan from star trek looking back at 
Snap Wexley. So these, these two characters looking at each other. And in the middle, it says, you have to trek before you war. Oh, it, done, done. So oh, no, cool. no, done, done. Just, that's basically – just that's basically geek orgasm right there. Exactly. That's, that's basically geek, geek orgasm. orgasm like yes. crazy. <laughs> and I am one of those guys. I mean I, I – you know, um, the, the people say, oh, you know, uh, Simon Pegg and you and Simon. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, Simon's had bigger roles in both those movies. That guy is one of my favorite actors. Yeah, ever. Simon's awesome, and I Simon's love him. Awesome. And he's a writer and everything. But uh, he even said to me, he's like, "No, nope, I got to say, mate, you, you got you. <laughs> I'm in, I'm in uh, prosthetics. I got mask on. <laughs> That's true. He was. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, dude, I'm one of the only Deep Roy too. I saw him on the carpet, and I was like, dude, we're in. He's like. Yeah, I'm all covered up. You're you're you. In both those things. <laughs> you got you got a little bit more street cred uh, on right. Star Wars because you actually showed your face. <laughs> That's right. And I have more dialogue than Mark Hamill. I'm just saying. I'm just throwing it out there. I'm just throwing it just out there. Saying. Yeah, I just uh, I just worked on a project with Mark. He was uh, on the this show I'm doing for, with Hulu, and I, I didn't get to work with him, but I've heard like the the directors were telling me that he's just amazing. He's amazing to be uh to be on set and stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. He's, yeah. So are we? Uh, how are we on time? Because I, uh, my, we're we're, uh, we're recording voiceover for the documentary that I'm uh, that I'm about to tell you about. Yeah. So tell tell me. Yeah. Tell me about your documentary, and then I just have three questions I ask everybody, and then I'll let you go, sir. Okay. Awesome. The, the documentary I'm really excited about Claire Kramer mm-hmm. um, and Bianca and the, the amazing, amazing people. Mm-hmm. Claire came to me and said, "There's this guy. His name is Andre. Mm-hmm. He is amazing. He had a." major, major, um, uh, terrible accident in his life. He lost his legs. He was in Prague, fell in front of the, it fell down into the subway on the tracks and almost died. And they had to remove his legs. And since then he has done nothing but, uh, cycle with his hands. He does the, you know, it, yeah, you yeah. To see it. it's uh-huh. incredible. And I there's a I've... race across America uh-huh. that, um, it's for 12 days. And bicyclists try to do it in 12 days. That means you're riding for 14 hours, sleeping for an hour and a half, getting back on the bike for 14 hours. And you do that for 12 days. How do you do that? How is that physically possible? (laughs) I know. Try doing it without legs. Oh, Jesus. So that's what Andre's doing. He didn't qualify three years in a row, and he qualified this year. And his sister, Bianca, came to me with Claire Kramer and said, will you and Brad Savage, your producing partner, will you produce this movie? Let's a documentary. Let's follow his journey. Let's get some Winnebago's. Let's follow him across the country as he's doing this, as he's racing across America. So in June, we're doing it and we're a Kickstarter campaign starts soon. Mm-hmm. I urge people follow, uh, this, um, support this. Uh, the trailer will be out soon. It's going to be out in theaters. Our Kickstarter trailer is going to be out in many, many theaters. Thanks to nice. screen vision, as nice. well as on Kickstarter, but it's called Joyrider. Mm-hmm. And if you go to uh, follow us, uh, go to Joyrider Doc, J O Y R I D E R D O C mm-hmm. dot com, uh, you or follow us on Twitter at Joyrider Doc. Uh, it, it is, it's really going to be something. This guy is an extraordinary guy, and he's a testament to not letting anything stop you. And it, I think we can all really kind of learn from it and get inspired by it. And he's also a character. He's just, he's just terrific. Um, it's make sure, great. And make sure you send me all those links and I'll put them in the show notes as well. Uh, and then the last two questions I always ask all of my, uh, my guests, what is the lesson that took you the longest to learn, whether in the film business or in life? Um, focus. And the fact that you can't do everything that you uh, get presented an opportunity to do. <laughs> Tell me about because, it. <laughs> yeah, because it's really interesting. And you, I'm sure you know this too, and it doesn't matter what level of success you get to. Um, I've had an opportunity to, things get t- brought to me all the time or I come up with ideas for things. And uh, and it's taken my best friend, JJ, to show me, you know, just keep it focused. Keep it focused. Make sure that it's entertainment driven or it's ch- Charity driven. Mm-hmm. And as long as there's some form of entertainment in it, and that's what I'm doing now. Mm-hmm. But I get opportunities for businesses. I mean, I'm a I'm an entrepreneurial guy. I love technology. I mm-hmm. love business. I had an app. I mean, my app was a mobile coupon app. Dude, mm-hmm. what the hell am I doing? Yeah, what are you doing doing that? <laughs> doing that. That's so out of my brand. You right. can use all these terms, whatever you want, but focus. Right. And if that means you you have to let somebody else make ten million dollars on a night, fine. You don't have to be a part of everything. Find passion in what you do and focus on what you're good at. 
and you'll be more successful and you'll enjoy your life um, more if you focus. And three of your favorite films of all time. Uh, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Mm -hmm. awesome. uh, Willy Wonka. Yep. Chocolate Factory. And uh, Rocky. Ah, such, such a great movie. It's yeah. just such a great movie. I mean, people are expecting, I'm sure, Star Wars. These are, you, you know, for for me, to, and, and by the way, that might change if you ask me again right now, I might include the first Star Wars. But it's like, yeah. I I mean, look, movies I can't can't stop watching. Uh, if, if, if The Untouchables is on, I have to watch the whole thing. Sure, of course. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's one of those uh, movies. Yeah, Defending Your Life. Again, again, these are movies that, I mean, you started this. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's just, it's insane. I'm so, I love movies so much. And, uh, uh, or big ass spider, big ass. Obviously, spider. obviously, 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 big ass spider. And um, your new show with uh, Kevin Smith, Geek Out. When is that going to be, and where is it going to be? So, geeking out. Um, we did uh, nine episodes, ten episodes on AMC, mm -hmm. and we're working on the second season right now. Don't know if it's going to live on AMC or somewhere else, but we're very excited about doing a, a second season. And uh, it's such a joy being able to hang with uh, Kevin Smith. I mean, I love that guy so much, and. Um, it's almost like we feel like we've been friends forever. He's just a, a, an absolute love. <laughs> he's like <laughs> brilliant and geeky and hilarious and everything you expect, but he's also just a good human being. I love him. Awesome, man. Greg, thank you so much for taking out the time, man. I really appreciate oh. it. I had a ball. Oh, me too. Thank you so much. And thank you to everybody who's listening. And thanks for supporting everything I've, I've done. Hopefully I'll see you at the cons. I told you, man, Greg is awesome. I had such a great time talking to Greg and, and geeking out with him, man. And uh, if you guys ever get to go to a Comic-Con and he's there, you guys got to go meet him, man. He's awesome. So I will put all the links we talked about in the show notes at IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash 149. And don't forget to check out all of Indie Film Hustle's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram feeds because uh, they're going to be some awesome images from the set. Uh, of the shoot that I'm doing this week. So definitely check it out. As always, keep that hustle going. Keep that dream alive, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Indie Film Hustle podcast at IndieFilmHustle.com. That's I-N-D-I-E-F-I-L-M-H-U-S-T-L-E.com.